think uh, we're very glad to have George here at what is his uh, second team event. And uh, I think uh, we're very, also we're very pleased to have him here. And we're also very pleased to see someone who was uh, such a prominent figure in the Brexit negotiations actually being involved and being in charge of agriculture. And we hope that that will be useful for us all. Um, as NSA, we met George uh, before the referendum broke. Um, he had some very interesting and, um, uh, I think, forward thinking ideas for uh, the future of agriculture and for the sheep sector in, in specific. So um, we look forward to, as NSA, to working with him along with other organisations and to holding him and the government to event for uh, what he told us at that time. And we hope that we, together we can uh, build for this vision of the future for UK agriculture. Now, if you don't want to listen to me when we have George here, so uh, it's a great pleasure to ask George to take the stage and to uh, open the event for us. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sam. It's a real pleasure, a pleasure to be back here for my uh, second uh, NSA uh, sheep event. And uh, I'm going to come back because... We've made some progress on some of the issues that we were talking about two years ago, which I'm going to um, return to. But look, the industry's been through some challenges in common with many other farming sectors in the last couple of years. But my message today is I think there's a lot of uh, reason for optimism and hope uh, for this industry. Because the sheep industry we have here in the UK is the biggest in Europe. Uh, we're the world's third largest exporter of sheep. And I think that since our decision to leave the European Union, there are genuine opportunities created. Uh, opportunities to open new markets and opportunities to actually put in place a far more coherent, better designed policy for our agriculture that truly delivers uh, for sectors such as sheep. We've already seen, uh, since the decision to leave the European Union, a recovery in the prices of many farm commodities. And land prices are up about 20% now on the same time last year. Uh, and that's partly because we've seen an adjustment in the value of sterling, an adjustment that many analysts say was probably long overdue, and it's given a, a short-term boost in uh, incomes uh, to farmers. Uh, the second thing that I wanted to report is we've made a big uh, breakthrough this week in terms of opening the US market for land. The long shadow uh, of BSE has frustrated our attempts for many, many years uh, to open the US market, but this week uh, they are publishing a consultation that recommends uh, that the US market be reopened for land. There will now be a two-month consultation, uh, and then later this year we expect to get inward inspections from the US veterinary authorities, uh, and we believe we're on course to open the US market, which could be worth around £35 million a year to our industry uh, next year. The um, third thing that I want to report is uh, we've talked many times before about simplifying record keeping uh, for farmers, simplifying some of the movement controls we've got in place. And I can now report that we've just started the process of rolling out the new uh, CPH holding rules uh, for sheep farms. Uh, it means um, that in future, and we're inviting farmers in tranches over the next 18 months, but it means that in future, uh, farmers will not have to uh, record uh, movements uh, within a 10 mile radius, bringing it into line with what we've had for some time on cattle movements. And this is going to simplify uh, record keeping for many sheep farms. Um, we've also made some progress on changing the rules on carcass splitting, uh, moving away from the arbitrary rule uh, that says uh, when there's two teeth you have to split the carcass. We've been working uh, with the industry on a proposal that's now gone to the Commission with the support of the uh, UK government. Uh, to say uh, that where uh, there is a, um, a cut-off date of the 31st of May, uh, we believe that should satisfy the 12-month rule. I know this is something that the industry have uh, talked about and pressed me on many times. Indeed, it was uh, a high uh, issue on the agenda two years ago when I was here. Now, the final thing I just wanted to say is a little bit about the opportunities we have now uh, from leaving the European Union. Uh, the first thing that I want to do is to reassure people because I know not everybody uh, believed that we should leave the EU. It was a close result. And the most important thing we've got to take from that is we have to put in place a new partnership uh, with the European Union uh, that makes clear we still want a free trade agreement, we still want the UK to be a generous, outward-looking country that's engaged with the rest of the world. And we need to do that 
in order to reassure those 48% of the people uh, who on balance felt that we should stay. Now, in the meantime, nothing changes. We're still in the European Union until exit negotiations are concluded and until we actually leave. So we still have all of the same market access that we have now, and we still receive all of the same support payments that we receive now. Nothing changes until negotiations conclude and we actually leave. But in that time scale, that period of the next 18 months, say, uh, when negotiations are uh, underway, we've got a great opportunity to think through from first principles what a good agricultural policy looks like. Because the truth about the European Union is when you've got 28 member states uh, with many different political makeups, different industries, different challenges, getting a coherent policy that fits all uh, is never uh, easy. And it was never a strong point uh, of the common agricultural policy. And indeed, I think what we learned is that trying to have a pan-European legal system that governs the whole of agriculture right across the EU uh, was a failure. It was a, a bad idea, and now we are thankfully going to leave that behind. And it gives us the opportunity, in my view, to think through from first principles to what a good policy looks like. And I want this to be a chance uh, to really review things and to have a new policy that's rooted in the power of ideas. So let's consider how best we can help farmers manage fluctuations in their income, how best we can help farmers manage risk. Uh, let's look at what types of policies will do best uh, to improve farm profitability, uh, to improve the deployment of technology and investment in our farms so that they are more profitable for the future. Uh, let's look at what we can do to open new trade deals faster uh, with the rest of the world. And when it comes to the role that farmers play for the environment, uh, let's not call it a subsidy. Let's actually recognise that we should reward farmers for the ecosystem services that they provide, for the work that they do to protect water quality, uh, for the work that they do to prevent flooding, for the work that they do to promote habitats. And let's really recognise that and, and have a system that genuinely rewards farmers for that work that they do for the environment. So I think it's a really exciting opportunity to think through what are the key objectives of a coherent agriculture policy and how best do we put that in place. And I'm really looking forward to working with the industry, with the NSA, the NFU, TFA and all the other groups who've got interesting ideas in this area in the months ahead. Uh, so thank you again very much for inviting me and I hope you all have a very successful show. Thank you. Well, I think this is a great event, and the message I've got today is that uh, there's a lot of reason to be optimism. Although farming's been through a couple of challenging years, uh, we've seen, with sterling easing, a good recovery in land prices, up nearly 20% on this time last year. Uh, we've got many opportunities now. We've decided to leave the EU to think through from first principles how best to support uh, our farming industry and our sheep sector. And look, this is a, a sector that is the biggest in Europe, uh, Europe's biggest exporter of lamb, and with a third largest exporter in the world. It's a very, very important, vitally important uh, industry for us. And we've got many opportunities now to open new uh, trade agreements with the rest of the world, create new opportunities and support our farmers in a way that makes more sense. Yeah, well.